Hello Makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we're going to talk about the Creality Ender 2. Stick around! Welcome back Makers. So it's time for me to give you my official review of the Creality Ender 2. It's a little tiny printer that packs quite a punch and was heavily, heavily requested by you guys. Now the Creality Ender 2 was sent to me by Gearbest for an unbiased review and I have to say that as soon as I heard that it was a Creality, yes, the same company that does the CR10, I kind of was hyped up and was expecting big things out of it, especially after the success of the CR10. Now the Ender 2 is a cantilever style 3D printer. It boasts a print volume of 150 by 150 on the X and Y and 200 millimeters on the Z axis. It also comes with a heated build plate with some kind of, not build tech type, but a very good surface area which makes print stick quite well. It also has this mini graphic LCD display, can take micro SD cards and also can print tethered via PC. Now while this comes as a kit, it isn't actually fully disassembled so it won't take you that long to put it together. It took me about 30 to 40 minutes to put it up. Most of the components were actually already pre-assembled so it wasn't that complicated to put together, especially with the fact that they have very good uh, instructions video on how to assemble it. So I put it together and I started printing and the first thing I noticed, the very first thing, is the thorn on my side and that is no part cooling fan. Yes, another printer without a part cooling fan which I still cannot fathom till this day. However, seeing that it was here, I wanted to print. So I threw in some a Printer Pro um, bronze PLA and I printed a pre-slice G-code from the SD card. And this cat came out and this was almost flawless. So right off the bat, I actually had very, very high hopes for this printer because this is a really, really decent print. So I was extremely happy with the result. So seeing as the test file actually handled itself quite well, I decided to create my own profile in Simplify 3D and obviously throw in a Benchy. And this was the result. Now, this actually printed okay at 100 microns, but I could see that the lack of a part cooling fan was going to be an issue. And you can see from the bow of the Benchy that it started curling a bit. So I knew that this, this might not work as much as I wanted it to. So what I did next was I threw in some a Printer Pro PETG and I printed this thing off Thingiverse. Now this is kind of like a replacement shroud for the hot end where uh, what you do is you stick the existing fan that comes with it and it kind of shares the air, the cooling air from the hot end and also as a part cooling. And I wanted to see how that goes. So once that was done, I threw in another test print, another Benchy, and this fared much, much, much better than the previous one. So I really, really liked where this was heading. So I decided that, yeah, it's time to soldier on and keep on printing. So then I decided to throw in some filamentum PLA extra fill uh, green grass to print this vase. And I started noticing something and it's not that apparent on this. It is, but it's not that much. And that is, I was getting a bit of layer shift and it took me about four or five different tries to kind of get half a decent print. But I noticed that these layer shifts were becoming quite prominent and they were always occurring at the same time. So I decided that possibly I assembled the printer wrong. So I, I took it apart and I put it back together and I tried printing again. This time I tried to print the infamous faceless model right here. And this is also in a Printer Pro yellow PLA. And as you can see, there is some serious, serious layer shifts on, well, most of the bottom half of the model and just a little bit on the top. So I kind of figured, okay, there must be something wrong here because it, I, I, it's impossible to have this much layer shift without actually having a mechanical issue. So what I did was I kind of took the, almost the extruder arm away, the X axis, and I noticed that one of the bearings kind of was like, 
it was jamming in the same spot. So every time the extruder went, the, the hot end actually went past that point, it kind of skipped to some extent. And that was resulting in all that layer shift. So what I did was I changed the bearing and I started printing again. What I also did then was I actually removed the fan shroud that I had installed simply because honestly speaking, I didn't think it was making that much effect. And the problem was that no matter what I printed, it was always going to be exactly the same air strength. And I wanted to print more PETG and I know that certain types of PETG don't require that much cooling. So I decided to take that off and continue printing without it. And instead, if I need more cooling, I'll just throw in a USB desk fan right in front of the printer. Next, I decided to throw in some Azure Film Gray PLA and print this beauty right here. I did not have to decrease the size of this model because the bed actually accommodates it quite nicely. And the print at 200 microns came out absolutely beautiful. And I noticed straight away that the layer shift was much, much less evident. So I was extremely, extremely happy with the result. Once that was done, I decided to throw in some Azorum Film PETG and print Captain Plunderbus or Plunderbus Pete, something like that. I kind of minimized the size just a little bit. And I have to say that the results in PETG were absolutely gorgeous. Once again, no part cooling fan at 200 microns. This thing printed absolutely gorgeous. I then decided to print in vase mode and I printed this vase right here in a Print Pro yellow PLA and it came out absolutely gorgeous. It's not perfect. I could still see some slight layer shift and it was starting to get a bit frustrating, but I soldiered on and I thought to myself, okay, let me try to print something else and see how it goes. Next up was the Steam Lady and this was printed in Filamentum Rapunzel Silver. And apart from the issues with the cooling, as you can see that this suffered quite a lot from uh, the lack of part cooling fan, Everything else, the layers are absolutely laid down beautifully and very even. So I decided that the next print I do, I have to put a USB desk fan right in front of the printer. So then I decided to go back to the faceless model and see how it performs this time. I threw in some filamentive uh, red RPLA and this gorgeous thing came out. And this, this is almost, almost, Flawless. This thing is absolutely beautiful. It's at 200 microns. The layers are absolutely awesome. They're even, they're smooth. The details are all there. So I was extremely happy with the result. Finally, I wanted to print something a bit challenging. Now, I have issues printing with supports. I don't really like supports that much because in most cases, they kind of ruin the beauty of a print but I wanted to print something very challenging, something very intricate because I was very impressed with the faceless model. So I decided to print this model from my mini factory. This is Miss Scarlet from Cluedo. And I scaled it up to about, I think about 300%. And while most of the print is actually beautiful, I noticed a massive layer shift right along her mouth. And that was extremely disappointing to me, but I wanted to see if it happens again at the same spot. So I decided to print it again. And once again, it was printing absolutely beautifully, but once it got to the mouth, there was that layer shift once again. So I started checking the printer again and I couldn't find anything wrong with it. Everything was, uh, all, all the bearings were tight, all the belts were done right with the right tension. So I couldn't figure it out. However, at the same time, I noticed something very peculiar. And that was that I had another print on the Anycubic i3 Mega that had a couple of layer shifts and that printer never gave me layer shifts. So it kind of got me thinking, which it's a bit bizarre that all of a sudden I'm getting layer shifts. And what happened was it turned out that my SD card reader on the PC is pretty much dying and it started corrupting some of my files. So what I did then is I switched onto my laptop, I ran the print from there and I started printing. 
And this was the final result. And I have to say, I am very, very, very happy with the result. While the print is not perfect, I'm actually very, very happy with the end result. And I have to say that for 160 euros on this printer, that's quite a result. So what are my final thoughts on the Creality Ender 2? I have to say that this is quite a decent machine for 160 euros you get a fairly decent build volume. While it's 150 by 150 on the X and Y, it does give you 200 on the Z axis. And that helps a lot with certain prints. The fact that everything is integrated with the spool holder and everything, it takes a very small footprint. It also has a power brick rather than these normal um, PSUs. So that made me extremely happy. It's quite reliable and it literally uses pretty much the same component on the hot end as the Creality CR10, which is why I think the print quality is so good. What I don't like about this printer, to be completely honest, the one thing that really, really, really bugs me, not just this printer, once again, any printer is the lack of a part cooling fan. Now, while this fan has enough power in it to actually go into or around the shroud and push itself, push the air downwards towards the nozzle to cool the, uh, the plastic. That creates a bit of an issue because you cannot control that. So I could not print ABS on this. I tried, but I get instant warping or uh, lack of layer adhesion because it's literally cooling down as soon as it lays down the ABS. Now the lack of a part cooling fan can be solved because the board does actually take an additional um, fan on it. And there are quite a few mods on Thingiverse. It just bothers me that you have to buy a kit and you instantly have to start fixing it and expect the community to actually pick up the slack for a company. So that, that, that bugs me. That is it for me guys. Disclaimer as always, this printer was sent to me by Gearbus for an unbiased review. No money has exchanged hands. And everything I said in this video are my own thoughts based on this machine right here. If you want more information on the printer, I will be leaving uh, affiliate links in the video description below. Any other questions, leave them in the comment section and I will try to get back to you. That is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I want to thank you all for your support, especially my absolutely awesome patrons whose support means the absolute world to me. Um, yep, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And as always, happy making, guys.